Welcome back, it's been a while and we're approaching show season so I'd like to get this uh, ram skull that we made in our last video um, finished up, get some uh, have some experimentation and uh, for that we're going to be using some of this professional cold blue for guns. We'll see what it's like, I have no idea how to use this stuff, never used it before but we'll do run some test pieces and see what it's, how it is. But the first thing I'm going to do is clean this back I'm going to be using a finish of some sort, so I'm going to show you how I would go about dressing all these welds up, make, making some nice crisp edges, and uh, we'll go from there. You'll have to forgive any background noise, it's just started raining, and of course in a tin shed it's uh, quite loud. Um, let me explain what I hope to achieve as far as the profile is concerned with uh, grinding back the welds. Say this is the corner, so this is your thickness of steel going this way, this is your thickness of your steel going that way. So you've welded over the top like this. Hopefully with a little bit of penetration. Something like that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to angle my um, grinder, if you like. This is the grinder coming in this side. And I'm going to take away the material in this plane. And I'm going to take away the material in that plane. And I hope to have a sharp edge. So I like uh, hard edges, if that's the right way of saying it, hard, hard edges sculpture. So uh, that's what I'm hoping to achieve. And the only reason why I wanted to explain this is because I've seen a few people attempt to make the sculpture and they, they've, just, they've gone straight at it with a grinder over it and gave it a rounded edge and you, you just don't get that quite crisp clarity of the design and where the curves go. I prefer to have a hard edge so it's just keeping flat to the surfaces is what we're hoping to achieve. So, uh, like normal, I'll be wearing a P3 mask, uh, some ear defenders, and the good old safety specs whilst doing all this grinding, and uh, so I hope hopefully you guys will be doing the same as well. And today I'm going to be using one of these, which is a flap disc. This is a, a 60 grit flap disc. Um, very cheap to get now these days, they really have come down in price and these are fantastic for doing finish work like this. So I'm going to start with the 60 grit and I'll show you what I'll do after that. I'm not worried about where the line comes just yet until I've started doing the other side and then I'll probably just take little bits off each side until that line is nice and central in the middle. I think it should worth noting is that I've tried to keep all the grind marks going in the same direction and when I come to do the other side I want to kind of do the opposite because you will get a graining effect coming through and it's just nice if all these lines are nice and symmetrical going, going the ways that they should do and then whichever piece I'm doing on top so for here for instance I might try and keep the the lines going in this direction which is the opposite way to this so you get a nice contrast of detail between the two faces as you'll see in a moment <laughs> So I've made a good go at it. You can see with the horns here that I've actually put a bevel on top. You can see there uh, that was because there just wasn't enough material to get a fine point. But I quite like the look of the bevel. And you can see how I've crisped up those that forehead and got those ni nice lines, nice contrasting lines. But you can see there's still a bit of reflecting parts where I've sanded it, it's not quite perfect. So I still want to go over this with something and uh, I'll show you what that is in a moment. But let me just discuss how I'm going to get the hard to reach areas. So things like these corners, like inside the eye socket and especially this transitioning point here where the horn meets the skull, um, I want to define that edge. And what I'll do with that is to use a one millimeter cutting disc and to literally use the edge as a sander, but you can get it so close and fine that it can really V that corner out and get it looking nice and crisp. And then I'll show you how I'll get a nice uniform uh, grind all over. The uh, 
the welds are getting really hard to reach with the angle grinder, so I'm going to use a different tool. And the tool I'm going to use is this. It's quite simply a die grinder uh, with this tool. This is called a spiraband. So you get these little uh, little tubes of sandpaper, and they go onto like a little rubber bung is what that is in there. And as you tighten the nut, it compresses the rubber bung. Um, fixing the uh, spiral band in place. Let's have a go with it. And now for the really tight spots, like just in there behind the eye and stuff, uh, well, you can't get in with many tools. I'm gonna use one of these. This is a burr cutter. There you go, see that? And then uh, to finish that off, I'll get a little bit of sandpaper and just go in there by hand just to make it as uniform as the rest of the piece. So now I've finished the rough grind and I've really defined all those edges, uh, I really want to make it really nice and clean and polished up. So what I'm going to do is go over it again, but using these. These are like flap wheel uh, sanding discs, but for the die grinder. And I'm going to go through 60 grit, then 120 grit, and then 240 grit. And you may have noticed I've doubled it uh, every time. I know what you're all thinking. Is this any good for polishing up my face? Should we try it? Okay, so experiment number one. Uh, first, first of all, I've uh, sanded it uh, exactly the same as I have done with the uh, Ram sculpture. Now I'm just going to degrease it with this uh, special industrial degreasing rag which has got things like thinners and, or acetone or something like that on it just to make it better. And now I'm going to go, I'm going to experiment using the exact ratio as described on the bottle, which says three to one. So I'm just going to dip a bit in the brush. Now I've orientated the piece in such a way uh, that it's the same as if I was to paint the, uh, the sculpture itself. So a bit of an angled sweep. Right, one, two, three, here it goes. And then essentially the instructions say that the moment you've got it to how you'd like it to be, uh, all you need to do then is to just simply dunk it in water and just rin rinse it off, stop, stop the chemical reaction from happening any th further. Right now I'm starting to see blues come through. It's starting to go really blue now. Struggling to get consistency here though. Right, I'm going to stop the experiment now and wash this off in water. Now I'm wearing gloves in and uh, I've got all the safety kit going on because this stuff isn't, isn't, got, isn't got the nicest of kosh regulations on it. But if I wash it off, we'll, we'll then up the dosage and start our other one. And then we'll compare all the pieces at the end, shall we? And three, two, one. Wow, that reaction is a lot faster. So you can see that first drip that I did, it's really kind of stained that and then it's been a real struggle to get the others, the other parts nice. Now up here, it looks like where I didn't degrease it, so you can see it's resistant. Oh look, you can really see a fingerprint coming out there, look at that. That's where I touched it and didn't degrease it properly. These blues are looking really nice. Oh, look at those blues coming out. So I'm trying to concentrate the brush on areas that are I'm not bluing as fast. Right, I think that's as far as that one will go now. Without spending a long time. I'm going to wash this off and we'll start 
another one. Okay, now let's try three to one. Let's, uh, let's, that's three parts blue, one part water. Let's see how this goes. So it's a really fast reaction and I can see my brush strokes really easily which is really contrasting I think to the first one I did. The first one you hardly saw the strokes at all, it was very gradual. What I want to try and do is blend this. And yeah, I think I think the less water you have, the more blue it goes. I mean look at the blues coming out on that now. So I think the water actually makes it go blacker is kind of what I'm noticing. Trying to agitate the reaction a bit just to blend in those in those shapes. Really hard that is to stop the brush strokes. The brush strokes like the drip marks are so easy to see. Stapling it once it's like almost like once the reaction has happened it doesn't want to change which is what I'm worried about really. I'm thinking you could use it in a spray form and put like a fine mist if say you're doing something big like this but I don't think I'd want to do that with this chemical. Sounds a bit dangerous though, especially for my lungs. But look how blue that is. That's really going blue. But really dark around the outside edge. Now it does ask you in the bottle to actually leave it for several minutes and even leave it submerged in a solution. Um, that's obviously very difficult to do when you've got a sculpture this size. So I'd be more tempted to just keep brushing it and just keep brushing it on gradual layer by layer. And I guess the more and more layers I do, the more darker these colours become. Right, let's wash this wash up. Wash this one off and we'll get the last one experimented on. So this time we'll try just neat straight out the bottle solution as it comes and see what kind of effect this gets. So no water whatsoever on this one. Wow, that's like instant. Now oh, that is really going dark now. I've just put like layer after layer on and just try to staple in any areas that aren't quite changing. And that is producing more like what I was thinking of. Which is more like a dark black colour. Okay, so these are the results from the experiment. Um, I, you can see I've tried to write in paint pen uh, exactly what the ratios were, but yeah, you can't quite see that on the camera, unfortunately. Uh, but the bottom right hand corner is our proper one, how, how we did it to the instructions. So one part blue, three parts water, and it really came out gradually and it actually produced a really nice blue sheen, as expected. Uh, the one above that, the uh, one to one, so that was 50-50 of each, of each uh, water and blue, and that, that came out fine. That, it was really hard, you can see a lot of the brush strokes really easily, and it was a bit more difficult to control, but a very light, light blue came out of that one as well. Um, and then we go uh, immediately left, uh, so the top left, that is three to one, that's three parts blue, one part water. Um, and that was, that was again, faster reaction, uh, also, um, you can't quite see the brush strokes, but I did blend them a lot in, in on that one. And then the one right at the bottom on left bottom, uh, that is pure, pure gun blue. And... Really, there's a huge difference, I don't think, between all of them, apart from the pure one reacted the most quickest and it is the most darkest. And I think the first one is the lightest and, and happened the more slowest. So maybe, to me, maybe the water is 
uh, reaction time, so more water, slower reaction. Uh, but really, it, it they all reacted the same, I think. Um, so yeah, not too sure. Maybe it's just a good way of bulking up the uh, the fluid by adding water and just taking your time with it. Uh, and I think, which one am I going to go for? I think I'm going to go for as it in described on the instructions, and if I think it needs more, I will add more as I go. Uh, and I think it, worse comes to worse, I can always polish it back. The grain is how I like it, so I can just do it 240 straight over the top, take the gum blue straight off, and go from there. So I'm not too worried. Okay, so now we're fully degreased. Here goes nothing. Let's uh, see what it looks like. So I actually think that this hasn't quite worked how I wanted it to. And all this yellowing that you see is actually rust. And I think that's just because of leaving the solution on the skull for too long. Um, and obviously being water with a, uh, a metal edge kind of a thing, it's just made it go all rusty. Um, but what I'm going to do now is get some wire wool and just clean everything back again and then I think I'm just going to staple it with um, like a, a fibre cloth like this so I'm going to soak this in the uh, in the pure solution now and I'm going to staple over what I've got going on um, but I think just a simple piece of wire wool will, um, will fix a lot of this rusting now if I just go onto the face I'll try and show you nice and closely here see it's all kind of rusty around here if I just I'll just give it a rub now with the wire wool. It's actually not affected the blue at all. You can really see the blue there, actually. But it's just gotten rid of that rust. I'll try and get it in a, in a good light for you compared to the other side. If I do the other side now as well. Yeah, that's, that's, that's working, I think. And now what I think I'll do is I'll, I'm going to staple it with some of the pure solution and get these colours to go a bit deeper. Right, so let me wire wall the rest of this then. Right, so I think I've finally gotten it done. And what I'll do now is I'll wax, wax this over to, to seal that, stop it rusting ever. Um, but the technique that I found that worked in the end was actually getting some wire wool, you can see that, and um, actually dipping the wire wool in the solution and rubbing it on. And what I found is any, any place that it was rusting or um, was uneven, the wire wool actually keys into it and starts to create that reaction further and it just worked really well. It's more homogenous now, which is what I was more looking what I was looking for. Really nice colour that is actually. Um, I found that dabbing it with the cloth uh, and stapling it didn't actually work. There was something about using the brush and having fresh uh, solution on the brush was actually working far better. 
Um, but do bear in mind that if you're going to choose to do gun blowing yourself, um, it takes a very long time. As you can imagine, all of the different grits of sanding, even putting the solution on itself, uh, is taking me uh, several, several hours. Um, would it be my go-to choice of finish? Um, if the client wants it, yes, but it's an expensive one because just the amount of time that it takes. My choice of finish for normal projects is really to get things hot dick galvanized and then I've got a special blackening solution that I put on top of that and it works instant, it's very quick. Um, and the horse, which is just outside, is uh, is doing really well. In fact, why don't I just show you the horse, see what you think of it. So welcome to my humble shed in the garden. You can see I've got a chimney now for the forge and I'm sure we'll uh, be using that again later at some point. But this is the first of the sheet metal horse sculpture designs that I've done and I'm hoping to do a lot, lot, lot more. I've actually got some con conceptual drawings made for lots more sculptures, but uh, as with most things, it's all about getting the time in to do it. But with your help and support, um, I certainly will be able to get more of these made and done. So I'm going to seal this now with wax and uh, get it nice and protected. But what I'm also going to do is mount it so it's uh, going to be wall mountable. And I'm thinking I'm going to put some LED lights inside it so you get this kind of cool lighting kind of shining out from behind it. Um, and then what I'm going to do is take this to the show, so definitely I'll be taking it to the Royal Welsh Show uh, 2019 this year, and uh, if you're going to go, I mean come along and I'll see you there and have a good chat, which would be awesome. I'd like to meet you guys and to see how you're getting on with different projects and if I can be of any help, or I'll try my best. Um, but also to hear what your, what your views are, what your thoughts are, it's good to have those kind of chats in person I think. Um, so yeah, 2019, the Royal Welsh Show, I'll be there. And if I can be at any of the other shows, like uh, the Three Counties Show, which is more closer to me, I'll try and be there also. Now, have you noticed what's in the background? That's right, it's going to be my new power hammer. Very excited. I've done the tests, it's going to work. Hope you'll like it. Right then, happy forging a life worth living, and see you in the next episode. Bye.